Hornady Lever Evolution Ammunition Ballistic Test. Today what I have is the 44 Magnum and the 357 Magnum. The 44 Magnum is a 225 grain FTX and the 357 Magnum is a 140 grain FTX. FTX simply means flex tip technology. And that's the same terminology they use for their critical defense, even though this is a completely different design. Now, a lot of people will say this stuff is designed just for lever action rifles. And they're right in some respect, but if you actually look at some of the original um, information on this Hornady ammunition, it's designed for both revolvers and lever action rifles. So let's go back to the beginning of lever evolution. I believe it was like 2006. And they started creating lever action cartridges that had a point, a spitzer tip or a pointed tip. And previously you really couldn't do something like that with lever action rifles. You had a blunt tip. And the reason why is because the, the, the primer on the round ahead of it in a tubular magazine, if you drop that gun, it could be hard enough that it could set that primer off. But with our flex tip, you know, it's, it's soft enough to where it's not going to set off another primer, but it's hard enough that you're going to get uh, better long-range ballistics. So that's simplified what that is. And inside this bullet is essentially like a hollow point. It's not a very good hollow point, but it's essentially a hollow point. So this ammunition, in my thinking, I think it could be a good just middle-of-the-road round for multiple purposes because it probably won't over-penetrate too much because um, it has a hollow point it'll still penetrate more than typical hollow points. So I could see this as being just a perfect cartridge for someone that's kind of an outdoorsman and a concealed carrier because they could have pretty good overall performance to stop a dangerous animal or take down game or defend themselves, especially at the 357 Magnum. So I'm going to go through the chronograph, see what kind of velocity and accuracy I get at the same time. Then I'm going to do my standard ballistic test which contains four layers of denim, followed by three inches of clear ballistics to represent hitting a pectoral muscle, followed by a quarter inch medium density fiberboard to represent hitting like ribs or sternum and to more clear ballistics. So I will do a shot with the medium density fiberboard and without it, typically it takes away about two inches of penetration, but not always. So we'll see what we get in our quote unquote ribs or sternum shot versus without this in our gut shot. And then I'm gonna fire from I'm gonna start from 25 yards just to kind of see what kind of just accuracy I can get. And then I'm gonna back it up further because you know, with that tip on that round, it should have better ballistics and just better velocity at distance. So I'm gonna back up from a little bit further and see how it shoots as well. So let's get started with this test. All right, first up we have our 357 Magnum. We're about five yards from the target, four yards from the chronograph. It's rated at 1440 feet per second. That's probably through an eight inch revolver. So let's see it out of my four inch revolver, how close we get to 1440 feet per second with our Lever Evolution 357. 1394. 1394. 1271, interesting. 1368, 1367, good accuracy, but that one was just a really low, below rated velocity. That's interesting. Let's see what we get with our 44 Magnum. All right, 44 Magnum, we're rated at 1410 feet per second. Again, that's probably through an eight inch revolver. So I got my four and a quarter inch Smith & Wesson Model 69. We'll see how close we get to that 1410 feet per second on this. 1349 so again with this we're kind of dropping a little bit of our velocity there just uh weird case ejection is pretty stiff <laughs> So let's see what we get when we hit our gel block with these rounds. All right, first up we have our 357 Magnum through our four layers of denim, three inches of clear ballistics, a quarter inch medium density fiber board, and two more clear ballistics. Let's see what we get with our 357 Magnum. 
All right. So through our MDF, we have what appears to be expansion in that first three inches, the same way a traditional hollow point would. So that's pretty impressive. You know, we actually have a lot of damage in here and we're going to a full damage path of about 17 and three quarters, which would really only be typically about 19 and three quarters without the MDF if, if the bullets expand exactly the same and all of that, which they rarely do. But I'm gonna take a shot above that with no MDF to represent our gut shot. And we'll see what we get with 357 Magnum with no MDF. All right, so up above that, no MDF for our gut shot. See how our 357 Mag does. All right, that's interesting. So instead of that 17 and three quarters, we're looking at about, it's about 19 inches even. So we only have about an inch and a quarter difference instead of that two inches. Pretty much the same damage. And I see what looks like hollow point expansion. So overall, that's better than what I would have expected it to do. It looks like a really good defensive round. So let's try our 44 Magnum and see how that does. All right, so we had about the same velocity, but a lot more bullet weight. So I do expect more penetration with this. So we're gonna go through our denim, three inches of clear ballistics and medium density fiberboard to represent our ribs or sternum hit with our 44 Magnum. Let's see how this will do. <laughs> And I'm laughing, just not just because of that stuff falling off, but we can see right here, that does typically indicate expansion in that first three inches. That is a massive hole. Put my finger all the way through it. This did slide the whole two blocks, 34 pounds worth of blocks back about a half inch. <laughs> so what we're looking at here, um, total penetration is about 20 and a quarter. And I see expansion. Now I do see some shards of lead and stuff breaking off. But overall that looks really good. Let's try it. Through our quote unquote gut shot, we should get up here probably, somewhere around here. Uh, but we'll do it without the MDF and see what we get. All right, no MDF, just our gut shot, 44 mag. See how this will do. So instead of that 20 and a quarter, we're at 20 and a quarter. <laughs> there is no difference. And I think it's because it looks like, from my angle anyways, the reason why it penetrated less is just because it looks like maybe slightly larger expansion with our just plain gel shot. So this is pretty typical for normal hollow point defensive ammo. Maybe just a little bit more penetration. We're talking like a 125 grain semi jacket, a 357. You know, we're, we're closer to in here. Um, 158 grains, maybe up in here. So we're not that far off. So overall, this is a really good defensive round from what I can see from these ballistics. So our next test is to see how it shoots at a little distance because that's really kind of what it was intended for was taking shots at distance. So. I'll try a few different distances and see how they shoot. All right, 25 yards, 357 Magnum. I'm gonna fire double action. Just center mass, see what I can get. This is pretty much maximum, typical self-defense range. So let's see what we get with our 357 Magnum. Ah! 
Real nice. Real nice, to be honest. 44 mag. See how this will do for me. It's got a bit more recoil for sure. Let's back up our distance a little bit and see how these drones shoot. All right, 50 yards from the target. Maybe this is a scenario where there's a large animal and you see it kind of coming at you. It's dangerous. Don't have time to cock the hammer. 357 mag. Let's see how this will do. Not too terribly bad at 50 yards. 44 magnum. Let's see how this one will do. Hold that one. All right, uh, let's move it back to 75 yards. All right, 75 yards from the target. Now, let's just say it's a hunting scenario. All you have is self-defense guns like four inch revolvers, um, but you want a round that's gonna retain more energy at range. So a single action, you know, that full size silhouette's about the size of a, a deer. And you need that extra velocity at that range and you're gonna shoot single action. So. See what I can do with 357. Not sure where that head, I think it's kind of high maybe. That's that one. Pull it to the left. Missed it. So not so easy at that distance. I don't shoot single action very often, so I get a little bit more wobbly on my grip when I do it. So I got three rounds of 44. Let's see how our 44 does at that range. There we go. Uh, I pulled that last one. I only had three left. So at range, it seems like the 44 mag does better. So overall, what I'm seeing with this is it seems like a really good defensive round that has just that little bit more deep punch than a typical hollow point. So it really is probably something that's really kind of starting end of a good hunting round and tail end of a good self-defense round so it really is kind of what i was thinking it would be now accuracy that could just be on me at this distance um a 357 seemed though like i should have had more hits like maybe it was opening up that group a little bit now this this was all me those two hits that i had good shots are like you know that far apart so I would say at, at distance, this 44 did a little bit better and that makes sense. You know, you got more, you got more weight going down range. It's less likely something to happen. So overall, this ammo did better than I thought it was going to do. And it seems like it's doing really well. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.